Okay, this is just going to be a quick set of videos that's going to walk you through the steps for nomenclature, which is just your naming and writing uh, formulas for compounds. Um, so this is really getting into the details of speaking chemistry, basically. So um, first of all, an ionic compound. Um, the way to recognize your ionic compounds is that you are looking for a metal with a nonmetal. And what's happening with these, when you have a metal and a non-metal, is that you're starting with something that has extra electrons, and you have something that is in need of electrons, and so they're going to help each other out. So for example, if we have something like um, magnesium and sulfur, okay, metal is magnesium, all on the left-hand side of the periodic table, um, to that metalloids line, and then nonmetals are to the right, okay? Um, but magnesium, we know, has two valence electrons. We know that because if we look at its electron configuration, we go 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, okay? And we look at the outer energy level and how many um, electrons are represented there. So we have 3s2, so that means we have two valence electrons. Our sulfur, we would find, goes to 3s2, 3p4, so we have six valence electrons. So our next step is that we're going to show each of these with the appropriate number of valence electrons. So we have magnesium, who has two, we have sulfur, who has six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see that this one, it's gonna be easier to give away its electrons. This one, it's gonna be easier to accept two electrons in order to fill up all of its sides, okay? So magnesium is going to donate its electrons. Therefore, magnesium will end with a positive two charge, so it is now a cation. And sulfur has eight valence electrons. And since it gained two electrons, it's going to have a negative two charge and turn into an anion. Once we've seen that, we can recognize the ratio, so how many of each were needed in order to make this happen. And we see that magnesium, there's only one. We see that magnesium, there's only one, and there's only one sulfur. So we end up with our binary compound of magnesium sulfide. When you go to name your binary compounds, okay, you always start with the metal, and then you do your non-metal with an ide ending. So for this one, we have magnesium sulfide. Okay, let's do one more example. <clears throat> let's go ahead and look at one like, um, let's look at one with magnesium and phosphorus. Okay, so looking at our electron configuration, we know that magnesium, again, ends at 3s2, so he has two valence electrons. Phosphorus ends at um, 3s2, 3p3, so he has five valence electrons. So our first step is to represent that with Lewis dot diagrams. So magnesium with one, two, And we have sulfur, I'm sorry, phosphorus, who has five. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So what we see is this one needs to get rid of its two electrons, and this one needs to accept three. So again, we're going to show that transfer. Okay, so magnesium is going to transfer this electron here, this electron here. 
okay? But we notice phosphorus still needs um, another electron in order to have the eight valence. So we're gonna add another magnesium who has two. And we can see that he can donate one electron there, but now it has one extra. So we're gonna go ahead and draw another phosphorus with its five electrons. And we can see that magnesium can now give its last electron and phosphorus needs to now accept two more. So we fix that with one more magnesium. You can see that those get filled up, okay? So now that you've figured out what the transfer is, you can <clears throat> go ahead and represent them all. So we have magnesium lost two, so he's plus two, so cation. We have another magnesium who lost two, and one more magnesium that lost two. And we have a phosphorus who is all full with a minus two charge because he accepted two electrons and another phosphorus who has eight valence electrons and an overall minus two. Once you've gotten here, you count them up. We have three magnesium, so I'm gonna go Mg3 and two phosphoruses. And that is our answer. So the way we would name this is once again, we're gonna just look at our first one is magnesium. And phosphorus, we're gonna ch change that ending to an ide, so phosphide. And that is it. Before I end this video, I'm gonna just show you really quick the um, crisscross method, um, and then I'll continue on another video. So the crisscross method, going back to both of our examples, we had magnesium and sulfur. We knew that magnesium, if you look on the periodic table, is going to be two away from being a noble gas, going backwards to neon. Um, and so because of that, because it's in group two, has a plus two charge. Sulfur is in group 16. Group 16 is under oxygen, so oxygen is about two away from being neon. Okay, um, or I'm sorry, sulfur is two away from being argon, so we have a minus two, meaning it needs to accept two electrons. Once you've figured out their charges, it's just a matter of crisscrossing them, like this, and so you would think that it would be Mg2S2, but one special rule that you cannot forget is that if your subscripts can be reduced then you need to reduce them, such as when you're back in the day when you were learning fractions. If you ever had this, your teacher usually made you reduce it down to one half. So same thing here. These can both be divided by two. So it's gonna be MgS. And then you're done. Magnesium sulfide. The other example we had was the magnesium with the phosphorus. So if I show that, we have magnesium, who's in group two, so has a plus two charge. Phosphorus was in group 15, so he has a minus three charge. If you crisscross those, we end with Mg3, P2. Those cannot be reduced, so that is your final answer which if you notice, that's what we drew in the last example. One more <coughs> example, I'm gonna use um, one that's a transition metal. We're gonna use lead with a plus four charge, and we're gonna use oxygen, who we know has a minus two charge. Once we have those charges established, you can crisscross them, and we end with PB2O4. These can be reduced. So the easy way to do that is always divide it by the smallest um, subscript. And you end with PBO2. 
and we'll go into how to name that one, but that's going to be lead four oxide. Um, okay, so that's it. Um, one last little tip is that in case you don't know where these charges are coming from, on your periodic table, this is just a rough sketch of a periodic table, okay, your main group elements are found in group one and two, and then um, group 13 through 18. These guys are your guaranteed charges where you have a plus one, plus two, plus three. Skip over the carbon family because we rarely use the plus or minus four. Because um, once you get to uh, transition metals, you got to do something else. Um, and then it goes minus three, minus two, minus one, and nothing obviously for um, group 18. So again, skip the carbon family, but everything else has those guaranteed charges.